All right, a very, very special guest with us here tonight. We have Coach Mike Westoff joining us once again. Um, he was kind enough to join us, uh, I believe, right before week one, um, before the Jets got started. Of course, uh, Coach has been a busy man these last couple months. He's got his new book out, uh, Figure It Out. I would highly recommend that more uh, available at bookstores everywhere. So I, I would I would go pick that up. There's so many great stories about the Jets and his time with in the NFL and with the organization, you'll remember all those glory years with, with Rex Ryan and those fun teams. Um, and I remember when we had you on earlier in the year, coach, you had gone to visit the jets a, a few weeks prior. And right. you, you said that was, you felt the best that you had about where they were heading um, in, in about a decade or so, just where they, how they looked in terms of being coached and the talent on the field. Correct. Um, it, it looks like that's, you were right. And that's kind of translated here where, maybe it seems like their timeline to contend or that window has opened maybe even sooner than they realized. Um, so they're, they're having a good year. They go into new England last week at six and three. And uh, I know you had to be shaking your head the way that ended uh, with, of course, the, the walk-off punt return. Um, we can so, talk about that. I'll help you with that one. Yeah. What, what do you see on that play? I mean, it's, it's obviously the offense is struggling. Uh, one mistake. Struggling. Mistakes, yeah, <laughs> <You're being laughs> kind. Yeah, we're 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 gonna get into that in a little bit as well. Oh but my goodness, yeah, obviously- we got to talk about it because it really is a very very interesting subject. On the last play, yeah, I can talk about it a little bit. At the end, um, you know, they really had, I think they punted twelve times. I mean, I, nobody. You know, when I was with the Saints, we didn't punt twelve times in four games. Uh, <laughs> so when in Marino, we didn't punt twelve times. We didn't punt. I don't remember ever doing. That's pretty. That's long. I don't remember that. But anyway, um. They, they, the wind was blowing very hard to the left. So the ball was going to carry to the left. New England lined up and they doubled, they doubled Hardy, who's their best player for the Saints. Right. And he's their gunner or flyer, we used to call them, to the, to the left. So they doubled him. Okay. They put seven in the box. Now they rushed real hard from the left side. That makes the punter, if he tries to turn a little bit and punt it towards, let's say, down the number, Okay, if you're you're on the hash, you want to mm-hmm. punt toward the number, then the wind will carry the ball out. Well, by putting that rush at him hard, he wasn't able to do that. Now, what you have to do, and they don't do it. Very few teams do this. I don't understand because I mean I did it all. That's why we were good. You have to we what we call slam protect. You take okay. the wing, and you take your wing, and as soon as the ball snapped, he fires off the ball, and he smacks that number one right in the face. And then he just bounces out and he releases when the ball is punted. That gives you a soft side to punt the ball. That would let the punter hit the ball right to the number. The wind would carry it out of bounds. The game would have gone into overtime and who knows, but he punted the ball straight kind of down the middle and it landed. Just look on the film. It landed between the number and the hash. The guy took the ball, took two steps hard to the right, and broke back and da 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 da. Actually, there was a block in the back at the end. It should have been called. And Hardy, but you saw that. Yeah, they blocked him right in the back. But that's one of those things. Um, if you just do it right, you just go, you slam it. That way, mm-hmm. nobody, you're not the guy can't rush you. And you just punt the ball over there, and the wind will carry it, and you, there'll be no replay. Yeah. So it was. It, it just wasn't. They, they they were not doing it the right way. Just beyond that's all there is to it. Was it poor design? Was it just a young punter making a mistake? Was it the the wind? I know you said the wind was at you know at the uh, Patriots back, but what what caused it? Keep going. You want to keep going? Because everything you said was right. They're all <laughs> I right. mean all of it right. Or Bill design, Belichick the poor design was a bad punt. The wind, but you have to be able to help them. Yeah. You see, they're going to rush. They're going to rush right in his face. Mm-hmm. You know, when I used to do it, when we were really good doing that kind of thing. You know, we would, I mean, when I was at the Saints, of course, I had Taysom Hill doing that. Back with the Dolphins, it was Jason Taylor. Mm-hmm. And when I was with the Jets, I had Eric Smith, one of the best punt blockers in league history. Mm-hmm. We would rush into that guy so we wouldn't let him turn and put us on the sideline. That way he had to keep the ball in play. And that keeps everything going. So the design was not good. The punter didn't do anything good. And uh, the wind was terrible. But you have to play it. It's going to be windy. Yeah. You know, come on, it's in it's in New York. It's up north. That's what's not terrible. It wasn't horrible. Punt the ball up toward the number. Mm-hmm. The wind will catch it and blow it over. There'll be no place to go. You line drive in the middle of the field. Not good. Yeah. 
Coach, do you-, you have to protect it the right way, and they they don't do that. So you know, you're, you're you're handicapping your your punter. Do you do you see many or even at least a few similarities between this team and those Rex teams that that you had early on? It, just in terms of really really good defense, one of the better two or three in the league, really strong generally special teams unit, good skill position players, but. It just seems like the quarterback obviously is is kind of restricted and, and yeah. almost it's to a, like a, it, it's a good question. You bring up a good point. Um, I'll tell you how I compare it. Um, very similarly, yeah, the defense is good. I think our defense with Drell was a tiny bit better in the secondary, a little mm-hmm. bit. Where I like these guys is I love the two defensive tackles, Thomas and Williams. Yeah, I think they are good football players. Oh, yeah. Boy, they're really a factor. So I like that part of it. I think they might have been a little better there than we were. I think we ran the ball with uh, Thomas Jones and, and LaDamian a tiny bit better, but yet the, the Jets run it good enough. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Jets are okay on special teams. I think I was better. I think I was a lot better, to tell you the truth. But they're pretty good. They're not bad. <laughs> I, I, I would they're agree. They're not bad, but we, we were better. Okay. But the quarterback, you know, when, you're, when you compare Zach to, to, um, to Mark Sanchez, I, I think Mark was a, was a better football player. I just do. The thing that I see about, I think that I think the coaches made the exact right decision with Zach to, today. I think that's exactly what you sh- you can't just throw him out of the building. Right. You can't do that. But I think what they said to him is, this is not acceptable. We're not going to have two yards of offense. I mean, I, I live in, a, in an old retirement. You know, I could get a I could get a pickup team for my development could get two <laughs> yards. <laughs> I'd love. I'd pay to see that. With these guys, and I'm ten years the youngest guy. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. It just, and they don't like what it, the way he handled it afterwards. Right. You that can't was going to be. That. I mean, that, yeah. that that you'll lose the whole locker room when you do that. And that was my. That was going to be my next question. And I feel like I, I agree with you. So I think Sala made the right call because you have to. You have to send a message to the other fifty-two guys in the locker room. Is that no one's above the team? Do you think it was a mixture of obviously the poor offensive play and then the not taking accountability after? Was it just the accountability part that really pissed? I think it was off? a combination like, there. Because this is where he's been going. I think it's a combination when you start adding it all together, mm-hmm. because he just he just doesn't look good. He just doesn't look good. I'm I, there's some things personally about him that I really question. And basically, when I was there, this is exactly the football team that I saw. Mm-hmm. I think they're well coached. I think they practice hard. They play hard. Their defense is good enough to get you in the playoffs. The offense has to survive. Now, what we did with Mark is we made Mark manageable. You know, well, we did some things. This is what I think is pretty interesting. When I was doing the media stuff uh, those years, I used to really take pride how I would go out and research certain things rather than just get on the air and start blabbering about something like I hear guys do all the time. Okay, so I did a little work on Zach Thomas, or on Zach uh, Wilson, excuse me. I did a little work. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a guy that's a friend of mine that studied him when he was at BYU. But the key thing that he he told me about was he studied his pro day. Now, remember what pro day, you know what pro day has evolved to. It's Mm -hmm. become a showcase. Mm -hmm. It's where you work out at your university, they're practic- you've, they've done a million things that they're going to run, and they're going to showcase your your whatever you do, your speed, your strength, your agility, your throwing, et cetera, et cetera. Well, he gave me an interesting number. About 75% of his passes, this is what I was told, on mm-hmm. pro day, were from out of the pocket. Mm-hmm. They were getting them out of the pocket. Right. That's exactly when I left that practice that day and did my interviews, I said, you got to get this guy out of the pocket. Bootleg, waggle, sprint. They said that the showcased play, one this one guy told me, of his whole pro day, in his opinion, was he faked a run to the left and he bootlegged out to the right. And from out in the right, he threw the ball all the way across the field mm-hmm. and hit, hit a wide receiver running a streak Up pattern the down the sideline. He said the place erupted. Yeah. Yep. Well, my question is, Where's that offense? Because I haven't seen it. They don't get the guy out of the pocket. He's my height. I don't care what they list him at. I'm 6'1". He's 6'1". He mm-hmm. got to jump up to get to 6'2". But I'm just not <laughs> buying it. And so when I see him all the time in the pocket, I-, I think they have to accept a little bit of that blame. 
because you got to help this kid. I mean, we would get Mark out of the pocket, and next thing you know, he's throwing a five-yard pass to Dustin Keller. Right. And then, then he helped us. You know, and then we started, we would, we were, we, we stayed alive. And next thing you know, we were in the playoffs and we were in the championship game. This football team has that cape, in my opinion, has that capability. If they'll somehow straighten this mess out. I think, first of all, they've got to get a commitment to that type of offense that's going to help this guy be a better player. That's first. But then to tell you the truth, I'm not a thousand percent sure that's going to work. So if it were me and I'd go into mm-hmm. next year, I'm going in to make sure I have a guy that can take and win that job because I'm not convinced this guy can do it. Now, if he does, God bless him, but you better help him out. And right now, I, I, I to me, that, that, that when you, when you know what a pro day is all about and that's what they're doing. And, and I, where, where's, where are these plays? When, right. when do you see them sprint yeah. out? I don't see it So That that's, what's frustrating to me. But I think, I think the coach did the absolute right thing. He's sending a message. And uh, this young man's got to grow up a little bit in a lot of ways, a lot of ways he's got to grow up. And, and I, I, I think it, uh, it's time for that to happen. Yeah. You bring up, you bring up a good point there where he does look like he feels like he's restricted. He's not doing what comes natural. When you do that, we, uh, Matt and I were talking about before you hopped on, when you do that, it just stunts the growth of a quarterback. When you just stop him from doing what he does best, it's not a great thing for anybody. So I agree with you on that front. Um, you bring up a good point in terms of next year in 2023. Let's say Zach is not the answer. Where do you go? I mean, it, the Jets regimes kind of really having the, the best track record in developing quarterbacks. Mark Sanchez, Geno Smith, Sam Darnold, Zach Wilson. Do you, do you try to draft somebody early? Do you go get like a Jimmy Garoppolo and then you know, maybe draft somebody in the later rounds? It's a good develop? question. Now, I would disagree with you with uh, Mark Sanchez because I think, I think for a while we did a very good job of developing Mark. But then all of a sudden, you know, Mike Tannenbaum decided to change us from mm-hmm. the New York Jets into the New England Patriots South Branch. Mm-hmm. And, and we just weren't the same football team. I mean, when right. we led the league in rushing and played great defense and good special teams and asked Mark to manage us, we were a very good offensive football team. We were good. But when all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're getting rid of Alan Fanica and signing Plexico Burris, I mean, you tell me why that's a good move. And I'm still waiting to hear it. Uh, yeah, not. Maybe Mike can talk about that when he's on the air. That, that was that stuff was ridiculous. Um, so I that but I agree with you. But there there's some very good young kids out there in college. There's some good young football players. Maybe you can get one. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd have my eyes open. That's just me. I'd have my eyes open because I have. But yet, to tell you the truth, until I see this guy put in that situation where I see him getting out of the pocket and doing those things. It's hard to make, it's hard for me to be too, too critical. And I'm being critical, but I want to see him given a chance to get him out of the pocket and move him around and bootleg and waggle and sprint. And, you know, then you cut that, you cut your read field in half. And right. now you're looking over here, one, two, one, mm-hmm. two, run, one, two, throw back. It's not that hard. And they're not doing that. They're not the guys in the pocket. You know, I mean, come on, the guy out at the Chargers, he's six, six. You know, Allen's yeah. six five. Yeah, right. These are big men. This guy's that. That's not him. Now you got to move him around, and he's not like Tua that's real athletic and can run everywhere. That's not who he is, but he's athletic enough. So I think some of that has got to go to the coaches. I would agree because it feels like they're asking him to be Mark Sanchez esque in terms of. We're not asking you to do too much, but we're asking you not to make the mistake. When when the route's there, when the reads are there, take the easy thing. If it's not there, throw it away. Or when, But you're going to thrive on the ground and pound. And I think that's what they want Zach Wilson to be. Because we got, they, we got Mark, The only thing is that we got Mark out of pocket all the time. Right. Yeah. We moved that's, him all that, over the place. That's what he was good at. Um, but and it, I think, I mean, that's what you heard in terms of, you kind of alluded to it as pro day, but – all the scouting reports that you read when they drafted Zach Wilson was all you hear about is, oh, he's got this crazy arm talent and he's got this athletic ability and he's best on the run. And like you said, they're handcuffing him from doing that. And I get they don't want him to make the crucial mistake that costs them a game. But in terms of what they're having him do now, 
he just clearly doesn't look comfortable in the pocket. He it's he runs backwards more than he does forwards half the time. It's the pockets collap pockets collapsing in on him because he's he's going in the opposite direction. Um, and I agree with you, coach. I think the the staff has to take some accountability for this and just not not building the offense around what he's good at. They're asking him to do. I, just, I just, modest, just modest, just modest things. But I stood, I stood on the field almost right behind him, and I did not see a real, a real, a real pocket passer that I was used to seeing with Vinny Testaverde or Dan Marino or Brett Favre or you know some of those types of guys. I just don't see it, and so I, I, I have not. I think what he's what, and I know of him. What I know of him, the things that he does best, I haven't seen the Jets utilize that. I really have not. So they're going to have to, they're going to have to be a little accountable also. Do you think, and I, I've thought about this, Jerry here, we, we've talked about this a few times, but where the Jets are right now at six and four until last week, they, they I mean, they were in the playoff hunt. That could be the case very well after this weekend, but just knowing where they are now and they're having a good season, maybe that window of contention is open maybe a lot sooner than they thought. Do you think that maybe they have to make a call on Zach Wilson sooner than they thought they'd have to, because I think if the jets were two and seven or two and eight, right. I think Zach Wilson's probably playing this weekend, but the fact that they invested so much in him, but they're in a position now to win and make the playoffs potentially for the first time in 12 years. Do you think that in the short term and the long term, maybe they have to make a call on this kid a lot it's sooner a than question. they anticipated? It's a good question. And I, I, I kind of think that they do. I think they do. I believe they're in that situation. They're going to have to make a call. I think I, I, you can't just throw the guy out. You can't throw him out the door because, you know, when you get that young guy and you've got an investment, I mean, it, it's a prudent investment. You know, it's, it's, it's a good bargain, you know, because what you pay for him and then what you can get. But yet at the same time, I think they've got to get him in a situation where that someone competing with him is a real viable candidate. Mm -hmm. That's going to let's see who's because he's going to get better. And to me, he's going to not be the guy. That's the way I see it. So, and let's see, they got the, what, the Bears this week, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now who's after that? Help me. Bears. Uh, Minnesota. And then they go on the road to the Vikings. That's a tough one. Yeah. And then, eh, yeah, I mean, they got, a, they got a tough seven-game stretch. I mean, there's no, you know, slacks. They've got Buffalo, Minnesota, closing this season in Miami. Sprinkle Jacksonville in there a little bit as well. But, yeah. you know, can they write the ship? Can they make the playoffs? Can they, you know, they figure can it beat out? The Bears, they can beat Jacksonville. You know, Minnesota, I think Minnesota got exposed the other day. Yeah, you know, that's Minnesota fair. doesn't, if you shut the run down, they can't, they, you can push pressure to pass there. I think the Jets defense will do very well against Minnesota. So I think that's a winnable game. The Miami's going to be very tough down there because, you know, Miami's so lightning fast and so mm -hmm. explosive there. But, but yet, you know, the Jets secondary is pretty doggone good. They're not bad. So I, th I kind of think that's interesting. Um, where do they play Buffalo? In uh, Buffalo. In, in Buffalo. Buffalo. That's tough. That's a tough one. Yeah. But, you know, hey, they're they're fighting. They're in there. They're fighting for playoffs. I think they have a chance. Um, I believe that they – I said early that if they, they won some of those games early, which they won more than I thought, that they, that they would be in the playoffs. It might be the last seed. I don't really care. I'm, st I'm going to stick with that. I still think they can do it. But uh, – this young man is going to have to step. We'll see what uh, what Mike White can do. I, you know, he had done a pretty nice job for them before. I'm not afraid yeah. of him. I think that'll be interesting. So see what he can do. Why not? So I, I like what they did. I think it's a good move. Yeah, it's smart. What happens if, let's say, hypothetically, you know, Mike White comes out and he could either, you know, light the world on fire or he can come out and he comes out flat and he loses to, to Chicago as well. Do you stick with Mike White? Do you go to Joe Flacco? What's the what's the plan after that? <laughs> That's a I mean, tough one. Now, obviously, if he lights it on fire, you don't do anything. Oh, start, yeah, keep him. Let him yeah, run you, on hand. You sit there and start clapping. You're pretty happy. If he really struggles, then I think you got to go back and you got to really evaluate and see what's going on in practice. You know, but again, again, I, 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 I just, unless I see Wilson presented with the, what I believe is the, the, the requirements for him to succeed. I have a hard time just coming down and I, and I want to come down hard on him because I personally, he bugs me, but yet I, that, I don't think he's that, that to me is a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a conundrum, but mm -hmm. I just don't, uh, it, it's bothering me a little bit of what I'll, I'll give, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little secret, a little story. All right. When I went to the Jets practices this year. Okay. 
And then I was being interviewed on the radio. So I went up on that little po porch where they had the radio. Mm -hmm. and I was going to do two radios and a TV. And I'm sitting up there. And here comes Zach. And he comes up and sits right next to me. Now, I don't know him. And we start talking. And I was telling him that he remembered he had heard my name from having been there to Jets. And then we got talking. I was telling him about when I was at Miami all those years. And I coached offense with Marino. And I start telling him about Dan, about the things, how much I admired Dan and what he, how he worked. And I had my phone. I said, you know, I have his number. If I called him right now, which I could do, and he'll pick it up, he would tell you the two things that he did every week that made him Dan Marino. Well, I don't know this guy really that well. And I know it was just the two of us sitting there. But I felt like I was talking in Chinese. And he didn't pay any attention to me. And to be honest with you, I didn't like it. Now, mm -hmm, I didn't do really? anything about it. I was just yeah. trying to be, you know, I was just trying to be helpful and just be, I wasn't telling them what to do. I really wasn't. Not at all. I wasn't being, you know, I was, I was being, you know, very positive with them. Well, I'll take you to the other end of the story. When I went to the New Orleans Saints in 217, halfway through the year, I didn't know one person in the building. I never met Sean Payton. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody. I, mm -hmm. I never, I didn't know one person. All right. So, but they wanted me to come in and help them with their special teams. When I walked in there, they were ranked 31st. When I walked out, they were first. So I, I helped them out. Anyway, my first day at work, there's a knock on my door after practice. I look up and there's Drew Brees. And Drew said, hey, coach, uh, he said, I know who you are. He said, I'm Drew Brees. I said, I think I know. I, know. <laughs> I think I got that one. And he said, would it be okay with you if I sat down and talked with you a little bit about when you were at Miami of what you know about Dan Marino? Wow. For three days after practice, he sat in my office with a notebook. It's a leader. Asked questions. And wrote down the answers all about what Dan did. Well, what did he, how about that? What did he do? How did he do that? Da, 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 da. Well, maybe that's why he's Drew Brees. Because he works his ass off. And so, you know, that that's, I'm, I'm used to that. As when I, you know, I remember Vinny Testaverde working like that. And, you know, uh, obviously Dan Marino and, and uh, you know, Brett Favre that we had. And of course, mm -hmm. Drew, that's what it takes to be successful at that position, which is the toughest athletic position in sport. The quarterback's the toughest, you know, not, not the guy running around kicking a soccer ball. I don't want to hear that. It's that that's the toughest because you got to perform and they're knocking your head off. To me, think, that's what the great ones do. And to be honest with you, now I don't know enough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a very small judgment. It's sure. very small, but it's kind of, it's kind of what I saw after the, uh, after the game the other night, it's kind of what I saw. I don't mean to age ourselves, but do you feel like that's a generational thing? I feel like that came, you know, a lot more consistently with like a Peyton Manning, a Drew, like you said, a Drew Brees, or some of those older quarterbacks who just got it and wanted to be a sponge and learn, learn, learn. Whereas like the kids nowadays kind of are just their attention span is too all over the place. You came, Tom, you were the guy. You watch, you watch Josh Allen. Yeah, yeah. Seems like the best teammate around. True. He comes off the field. He jumps up in the air and that big defensive lineman picks him up all the time, brings him down. There's a reason why that's happening. There's a reason. I know, I, I know for a fact that, uh, that, that Kansas City, you know, I, I know the way that guy is with yep. his teammates. He's During the summer, he took them all to his house. He paid for everything. Mm -hmm. Brought them all to his house. Had they partied, they practiced, they worked, paid for everything. Of course, yeah, he's obviously got the money to do it. But so, yeah, I think there is a little bit of a generation but I think that, that it still comes in peaks and valleys a little yeah. bit. And the good guys are doing things the right way. They're, they're studying hard. They're working at it. They're, they're good teammates. They understand. And so I think that's a part of it. And uh, obviously, obviously there's some jets in their jets front office and coaching staff that uh, are observing some of the things that we are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> and it's just, is that something that you could, you feel that is that intangible, so to speak? To be like you said, like the Josh Allen or the Mahomes, like that it factor, like to be a great teammate. Teammate, is that something that is easily identifiable in that draft process, or is like you said the showcase for you know the pro days is something that easily masks things like that? that that's a that that's a really good that's a really good question. Um, that that would be a good question to bring up to a scouting to the whole group of scouts to go in and say, hey, okay, guys, is this something we can identify, yeah. or is this something that can be masked? 
how important is it? I, and I agree with you. I think that's a really good question. And um, I everyone think, can say the right I, thing. I think, yeah. I, I, I think it can be that you you can figure it out. And I think guys don't change. And I used to argue with guys, you know, with scouts and, oh, well, we'll get them here and we'll get them turned. And I said, well, what are you talking about? You, know, <laughs> you got all them spots like a leopard. We think you're going to change it. You're going to be a tiger. <laughs> you know, we, don't, we don't go around the locker room with a little magic dust and sprinkle some dust on him. And all of a sudden he's a new guy. He's a pain in the ass. You know, oh, I don't yeah. want him around. Get him the hell out of here. Uh, he doesn't practice. He's hurt all the time. What makes you think all of a sudden he's going to change? Right. So it's a good point. And, um, I think it can be discovered. Again, the the effect of it and the veracity of it, I don't yeah. know. I'm not sure. It's a, it's a good point, but it's a point that I think needs to be brought up. So I, I'll let you talk to the scouts, see if they can figure it out. I'll find out. I'll let you know, Coach. Yeah, let <laughs> me know. They should bring you in. Coach, how, how, how much of this do you think is also a, obviously they're not calling certain plays for him and he's, he's restricted in many ways and he's just flat out not playing well, but – how much of this do you also think could be a mental thing for him? The the pressure of playing in New York, the teams playing well quicker than they thought they should, and they're they're in contention. How how much of this is mechanical, and how much of this maybe is just a mental thing? Because to me, it, good it seems like a lot of it's a, a mental thing for, it, for it, him. It probably is. It really should not be though. I mean, it really shouldn't be. You know, when you go out and you practice and you do those things, you, you're good. And you know, these guys are good. You know, they've been practicing and doing this stuff their whole lives. You know, they're good players. They practice at a high tempo. They they do these things. You coach it up, and then you have to just go out and do it. And uh, of course, it can be a little bit mental. It certainly can. I I, I can't answer that. Um, New York New York can be tough to play, but not that much tougher. I mean, you know, the, the New York media kids themselves sometimes. You know, they're the New York media. They should look at themselves. You know, they, <laughs> none of them got picked in gym class. Give me a break. Uh, all right. But I love them, tell you the truth. I, I, I loved working with them, to be honest with you. I, mean, I tease them all the time about stuff, but but I respected them. I, I respected New York media. I really did. Um, it can be tough. It can be tough because it's so big and so encompassing. But come on, you're 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 a good football player. There's no place better. The, the Jets are a great crowd. The stadium's great. I mean, I loved it. I used to, I couldn't wait to get there and let them play. I mean, I just, I love the guys. And there's a lot of pressure. You know, yep. there's pressure on all of us. But I loved it. And uh, no, nah, I don't know. You got to deal with it. And I think New York's a great play. If you can't deal with it there, I don't know, go somewhere else. Absolutely. I'm but looking forward it. to see how they turn it around, though. The quarterback situation, at least. I think I'm they looking will. Forward to, and yeah. I, and I, I, th I want to give this kid the benefit of the doubt. But I can't do that until I can see him doing some things that I think are more suited to his talents. So I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. I think it's like you said, it's it's a it's a culmination of a few things. And I personally, we were talking about it before. I personally think that the entire game turned around after that Denzel Mims dropped. He seemed like he was locked in, his footwork was okay, his his, you know, his arm angle, you know, looked good. After that, it's almost like he tried to do too much. He tried to think too much, then think his way out. He's air mailing screens, his arm angles down here. Right. It just went downhill and he just his mechanics completely regressed. It's just the real good quarterbacks. You know, have 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 no memory. They forget the play that just happened. They move. They're moving right on. Let's go. Exactly. I don't care about what happened on that one. Let's go. You have to. You have to because the game's so tough. Mm -hmm. I and mean, there's 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 no position in any sport that's more demanding than the NFL quarterback. There's none. I don't care. You just try to find me one. There's nothing like it. I mean, it's the, it, and that's why they get paid all the money. They get the big bucks. They should do it. They should because it's tough. And I, I think this guy, you know, you're, you're bringing up, we're all bringing up good points, but to me, unless I see him put in a situation that really exemplify his talents. See what he could do. I, I think we're all going to have to just hold back and wait and see. Wait and see. Coach, and before, see. before we let you go here, just one final, if you have a gut feeling, call it a prediction if you want. Do you think, the Jets are able to figure out over these next seven games and maybe sneak in? Um, or do you think that this quarterback situation really might uh, make it hard for them to dig out of the at the I, outside I think looking in? To be honest with you, I think they've been winning in spite of the quarterback. Right. Good point. And I think that'll continue. And I, I think White's going to do fine. I think they'll be okay. Because, see, that, that defense is good. Now, they can play. Yeah. They're tough. They got, they got a lot of good players. You know, and they can run the ball. The mm -hmm. Jets can run the football. And so, you know, when you can do that, I think you've got a chance that you just have to manage and control your quarterback play. 
and they haven't been able to do that, you know? And so I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with what I said earlier when at the very beginning of the season, I think they're a playoff team. I think they'll get in. I don't, they're not going to get in at the top, mm -hmm. but I think they're going to get in. And on any given day, they can make it tough on you just like they did with Buffalo and some, you know, going up to Green Bay. You know, Green Bay hadn't quite dissolved when the Jets beat them up. Right. Mm -hmm. The Jets That's just went up. The Jets started that ball going down. Mm -hmm. They beat the heck out of them. They beat them up. They beat them up. They really yep. did. And that, to me, I used to love that. You know, we had that with Rex. We mm -hmm. beat people up. We were tough. Nobody wanted to play us. They hated to play me. You know, nobody liked me. No, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like anybody else either. So it was easy. We, we got along great. But I, I loved our guys. Good, knock your head off. Yeah. You know, fair, the right way, not 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 BS. No, hard nosed football. Hard nosed you know. football. And I yep, think absolutely. the Jets have got that. And when you have that, then you just have to sell it. That's who you are. You know, I see that defense come on the field now. I'm gonna tell you what, they're they're pretty damn good. And that's yeah. that to me, that's gonna give you a chance. So I'm gonna stick with what I thought all along and, and I'm gonna I'm very much in favor of them and I'm gonna hang with them. Yeah. That needs to be identity. Play real, real strong defense, solid special teams, run the ball, and limit the quarterback mistakes. That's it. Correct. I agree. So, sounds familiar. And, <laughs> maybe, and how, maybe let and, you do the press call. You and I can do it tomorrow. Let's we'll do it. <laughs> and how poetic How poetic will it be? The Jets squeak into the playoffs, week, uh, the wild card week, against the Patriots. Watch. Watch. I, I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope you're right. Because they're beatable. The Patriots are not that. They're, you know, they're no, not they're beatable. Not. They're beatable. It's not, you know, I, you know, Bill does a good job. But their their offense is not very good. They're just not. You know, they they just don't, they don't have, have a receiver. No, they don't have a receiver anybody would trade for. Yeah. I don't think. Right. You know, they they and their their defense is pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty. They, I like the one. I like the one pass rusher. That kid's good. Judon. Uh, Judon. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's, good. he's a good player. Yeah, um, he's very good. But you know, it's a team you can beat. Come on, if the game goes into overtime, which it should have, it goes into overtime. You've got a tight game. That might be one of those games in overtime. I've done it twice in my career where when you, if you win a toss, you take the wind. That takes yeah. some guts. It took right. some guts. We did it twice. I did it with coach Shula. We, we won. We won. Trust your defense. We, and then we all you need is 20, 20 yards and you get they, the field they, goal they range. Kick off and you play defense. You get it. You get the ball and you move down. Now you just kick a field goal, kick a field goal. And you win a game. You go home. zerline has been good. zerline has been looking real good. It's done a good job. Yeah, absolutely. So they could do that. I mean, they, I, th I really believe that if they were going into overtime, the Jets had bad as they played. I really believe they were going to win the game when yeah. I was watching. Then yeah. when I saw that punch, you know, like, <laughs> and you knew I, I could just picture you doing exactly that. Yeah, yeah. he's going to run it back. He's going to run it back. Boom, well, as soon as he goes. caught it, I, I could see. I, as soon as they line up, you know what they're going to run. They got mm -hmm. seven in a box. I used to call it giant red. Giant meant seven in a box. Double the play side you're going to run. Set the other way and run it back to that side. Giant red. Yeah. I don't know. What can I tell you? <laughs> On to next week. Well, On to Chicago. For, thank you for saying something about my book. You know, you can get it at uh, through Amazon. Yes, or um, right Yeah, you can get it there. Uh, figure it out. The Amazon's a good place. Uh, you can get it there. Um, and, and so almost anywhere. But in the, some of the bookstores, you know, when you're small like me, you can't get as many out as you wish you could. We mm -hmm. sold a lot. But, you know, I can't put them out like, you know, I'm not James Patterson or some famous writer. <laughs> so, um, but you can get them through Amazon. They'll deliver it. You can get hardcovers now and they'll deliver it right to your door. And um, I think it's a good Christmas gift. I'm very, very proud of it. And I love the all-star team that I picked. And I like, you know, being able to read what Leon Washington said about things and Chris Hayes said, and, you know, those kind of guys. I think that's very, very special. And my time in New York was... Uh, the best years of my life so i'm very proud of it love it yeah it's it's fantastic jerry Great and i reading. both read it we've we've obviously talked about it at nauseum it's 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 one of the better jets books i've ever read um perfect christmas gift for any jets fan and or holiday gift coming up um couldn't highly recommend it more um, coach does a great job. A lot of really good stories that you've never heard. A lot of behind the scenes stuff that, and it's not just Jets, it's his entire, entire life. Just things that you never knew about him. It's time with the Dolphins, the Saints, the Jets. Um, just a lot of really good insight in, into the NFL and, and the mind of a coach and um, couldn't couldn't more highly recommend it but coach thank you. you thank you once again for the time we're honored to have you anytime you'd like to hop on we love talking football with you um it's it's always a pleasure um 
We appreciate you hopping on and happy Thanksgiving also to yeah, you. Same to you. Have a nice Thanksgiving. You guys do a good job. You're, you ask a lot of good questions. You, do it. you obviously put time in. You've done a real nice job. With it. So congratulations to you. Thanks, Thank, Coach. thank you very much, Coach. Happy uh, Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. And uh, hopefully we we'll get you on again around playoff time. And and uh, so. and we'll we'll talk about some things then. But uh, stay well, be well, and we'll talk to you soon, Coach. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night, Coach.